Then we come to Genesis chapter 1. Uh, we come to the, uh, the sixth day of creation. And of course, uh, we know that Adam, uh, male and female, Adam was created in the image of God. And of course, it says uh, in Genesis chapter 1, the male and female created he them. And so we know that uh, from Genesis chapter 1, that humans were made in the image of God. Uh, and of course, we look at the implications of that. And then uh, we'll think of the new creation. And uh, we'll think how the image of God uh, is being restored uh, through Christ. And of course, ultimately, it will be seen uh, in believers' lives uh, in the end. Well, let's just pray first. Our God and Father, give thanks for your word. Thank you for this time together to open the scriptures and pray that you would help us as we read them, help us to understand what we read, and help us, Lord, in our lives to uh, just uh, show something of your character uh, in our daily lives. So I give thanks for this time together and just pray for your help as we read the scriptures as we give thanks in the Saviour's name. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to pick up from verse uh, 26. <coughs> Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the fowl, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created, he created them, male and female, he created them. So we notice that in this particular verse, three times it's emphasized that God created, God created man, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Uh, this is going to be the focus uh, of our passage and then we'll read uh, some other verses uh, when we come into the New Testament as well. Well, of course, uh, we see at the pinnacle of God's creation uh, was the fact that uh, humans were created in the image uh, of God. And in Genesis chapter 1, uh, we're not given the exact details of what it means to be created in the image of God. Image of God, sorry. Uh, and... Henry Morris uh, goes on to suggest uh, in his book uh, some suggestions. Uh, the image of God in which man was created must entail those aspects of human nature which are not shared by animals. Attributes such as moral consciousness, uh, we know right from wrong, the ability to think abstractly, an understanding of beauty, and emotion, and above all, the capacity for worshiping and loving God. These uh, aspects and others separate humans from all other created beings. This eternal and divine dimension of man's being must be the essence of what is involved in the likeness of God. And since none of this was a part of the animal, uh, the soul, it required a new creation. Uh, and so, uh, whilst this is not exhaustive and does at least give us an understanding of what some of the image uh, of God is, a moral consciousness, the ability to think abstractly, an understanding of beauty and emotion, and above all, the capacity for worshiping and loving God. So it goes on to say that uh, it also refers to the fact that humans had a body, he designed and forced man's body to enable it to function physically in ways which he himself could function without a body. And so humans can see, and God can see, humans can hear, God can hear, and smell, and touch, and speak. Uh, these are all things that God can do, though he doesn't have to actually have a physical body. Furthermore, when he decided to appear visibly to man, he had done so in the form of a human body. For example, even in the appearances, the Theophanies, in the Old Testament, he appeared as a human being. And therefore, there's something about the human body which is uniquely appropriate to God's manifestation of himself. And therefore, God designed the man's body with this in mind. He designed it not like animals, uh, 
but with an erect posture that is standing up, with an upright gaze and countenance, capable of facial expressions, corresponding to emotional feelings, with a brain and a tongue capable of articulate symbolic speech. Uh, and so all of this makes humans uh, unique. And again, we already stated three times, it says God created. And again, just a reminder uh, to us to speak of God in the singular and plural. God is one, and yet more than one. Uh, and of course, uh, here we get another suggestion of the Trinity. Uh, and of course, this expression, man, doesn't refer just to uh, the male species. It, First, the male and female, both men or both the man and the woman were created, and their physical formation given in Genesis chapter 2 in God's image, and thus both possess equally an eternal spirit capable of personal fellowship with their creator. So, it's not to do with uh, Adam being a man and Eve being a woman, uh, they were both uh, created with the capacity to uh, display the image of God. But of course, we know from Genesis chapter 3. And Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden or driven out of the garden because of sin. And that means the image of God uh, has been marred by sin uh, at the old creation. But of course, in uh, Colossians chapter 3, we read this expression For those who have repented of their sin and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Here we see that uh, the image of God has been ruined by sin, but for every believer in Christ, God's purpose is that his image will be seen in the, in the life of every Christian. Because this is the daily challenge uh, for us as believers that uh, as we are renewed by our fellowship and intimacy with the Lord, we will be more Christ like. And this particular passage, uh, Colossians chapter 3, and a few verses later on from what we read, uh, gives us a good uh, barometer, if you like, of what it means to be uh, renewing the image of God. It will be seen, uh, first of all, therefore, as the elect of God, verse 12, holy and beloved. And then we get a long list, and these are all characteristics of Christ and of God. Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing one another, and forgiving one another. These are all uh, Christ like characteristics, what it means to have the image of God uh, restored uh, for the Christian. Uh, and it, it's those Christ like characteristics that he wants to see in our daily lives. And he continues on in verse 14. Of all these things put on love which is the bond of perfection and so love of course is very part uh, of the image of god and so what is true about every believer is that they have put on the new self which describes a new position as children of god we are now secure in an inseparable union with christ and are fully identified with his life our old self has been laid aside because of our new position we are now in possession of divine supernatural power which gives believe which gives the Christian the potential to walk in the newness of life because this expression comes from Romans uh, chapter 6 verse 4 knowing this that our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be done away with that we ourselves should no longer be the slaves of sin uh, sorry that was verse 6 verse 4 therefore we are buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And so Ray Stemmon has said, put on Jesus Christ when you get up in the morning. Make him a part of your life that day. Intend he go with you everywhere you go, and that he act through you in everything you do. Call upon his resources, live your life in Christ. And again, it's a quote from Ray Stemmon. Uh, MacDonald goes on to William MacDonald. Quotes the daily notes of the scripture unit, which records that the image of God is not seen in the shape of our bodies, but in the beauty of the renewed mind and heart. Holiness 
love, humility, meekness, kindness, and forgiveness. These make up the divine character. Of course, uh, those verses, of course, are based on the verses that we read in Colossians chapter 3. John MacArthur said, It is God's plan that believers become progressively, progressively, sorry, more like Jesus Christ, the one uh, who made them. You see, when we trust uh, Jesus as our Savior, God gives us his flawless righteousness as our position. But from then on, he works within us by his Spirit to conform us to uh, his likeness. Because it reminds us of two verses, one in the present, one in the future. First to Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. For we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, present tense, into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Here we see that the ministry of the Holy Spirit, or one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian, uh, is as we are occupied with the Saviour in the Scriptures, uh, the Spirit of God changes us to be more like Christ. And this is a daily process, that it should be in our lives. We should be more like Christ today than we were yesterday, and more like Christ this month than we were last month. Of course, the challenge is, if we're not to uh, come back to this renewing of our mind, to open the Word of God and pray and fellowship, with other believers, that we can grow in our walk with God. Bernard Ground says, Are we making the unblemished beauty of Christ-like character the daily goal of our life? And that should be the daily goal of our life, to become more and more like Christ. Osborne, put it like this, Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me, all his wonderful passion and purity. O thou spirit divine, all my nature refined, Till the beauty of Jesus uh, be seen in me. Uh, I think uh, that's a great uh, way of summarizing uh, what God uh, would desire. Then, of course, ultimately, when we get to heaven, uh, we'll be perfectly like Christ. Uh, Romans 8. <coughs> Romans 8 and verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8 verse 29. Here we see he will be perfectly like Christ uh, when we get to heaven. And ultimately, now, uh, the most beautiful people are those who remind us of Christ uh, by their character and the way uh, that they live. Uh, just to finish off. Uh, we again refer to the widow woman, Mark chapter 12. Of course, the Lord watched and people put it into the treasury. Uh, and it says, well, and the Bible says that one poor widow woman came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called this out to himself and said, Surely I say to you, this poor widow has put in more. All those who are given to the treasury. Now, she hasn't put in more in terms of monetary value. For all they put in on their abundance, for she had other poverty, but in all that she had, a whole livelihood. In other words, she put everything in. She put a whole livelihood uh, into the treasury. And that's uh, what we see in the widow woman's reflection of Christ, because he willingly gave his life for us. And so we see in the giving of the widow woman, uh, a very reflection of the character of Christ himself. Let's just pray. Father, give thanks that you are the God of creation. Thank you that all things were made by him. And we know that creation and the image of God being affected by sin and our own sinfulness and brokenness. We thank you that in Christ all that image can be restored through the Spirit of God. We pray that in our lives you would help us be more like Christ. Let the beauty of Jesus be upon us. So that in our lives, something of the beauty of Christ can be seen in these frail uh, lives of ours, uh, something of the beauty of the life of Christ. So, Father, we just pray for your help. We ask that each day you help us be more like Christ until ultimately that day we go to heaven and we'll see Christ and be perfectly like him. So, 
So I guess thanks now. Give all the glory and the same as thanks. Amen.